yeah. against us anymore. Amen. Those things which we've repented of, those things which we've asked forgiveness, <clears throat> we will not have to give an account for those things. Amen. Right. Those things have been paid for by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Yeah. Jesus took our penalty for those things. Amen. It right. required death. Sin requires death. Always has. Right. And Jesus paid that price right. on Calvary's cross. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Today I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. We got on this Tuesday night for a few minutes. And we're going to go back to it this morning. We talked about it a little while. We're going to go back to it for a few reasons. One reason for those that weren't here, those that did not get a chance to tune in and hear it, that you so that you can hear it. Another reason is, is because that we can never hear this too much and that this is something that needs to be gone over and over and over and over. Right. I say this many times, and you'll know what I'm talking about when we get into the meat of this morning's message. If you miss this, you miss it all. Come on. Amen. If you get this wrong, you get it all wrong. All right. If you get this part of your structure wrong, which is the foundation, if you get it wrong, then your your uh, house will not stand. Amen. All right. But the most important reason that we're on this this morning is because this is where the Lord has us. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we never want to move on as long as the Lord has us on something. We don't want to try to, well, Lord, you don't know what's best because He does. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the day that we live in, we can understand some of what Paul's talking about here and the way that he words it. Because whenever we're in school or whenever we're in college or what have you, we get a grade card. Amen. Yes. We get a report card. And whenever I was in school, you know, that wasn't the most pleasant day. <laughs> of our school year for Amen. me whenever I got my report card. That's right. But we get report cards in our educational system. Yeah. We get evaluations at our job. Oh. Amen. The, uh, your manager, your supervisor, your boss will do an evaluation. Mm -hmm. And they will decide on your own merit whether you get a raise or not. If you don't work, if you don't do good work, if you mess up, if you're not a good worker, then more than likely you're not going to get a raise. Amen? Amen? You're not going to get a good evaluation. If you're not a good student, if you do not do your homework, if you do not know what you're doing with your textbooks and your, your work that you're doing, then you're not going to get a good report card. Amen? So the Apostle Paul, he's talking along those lines, but he lets us know today in his teaching, thank God, that our report card with God doesn't depend upon us as much as it depends upon what He has already done. Amen. And faith in that. Hebrews the 11th chapter and the first verse. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I'm hoping whatever that is is just going down the street here in a minute. <laughs> or put a muffler on it, woman. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. <clears throat> for by it the elders obtained a good report. Now, by it. By what? By faith. By faith the elders obtained a good report. Now the elders it's talking about here, it's talking about the saints in the Old Testament, it's talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of those that are on the other side of the cross, amen, so to speak. And by faith, they obtained a good report. Yeah. So you see, when we talk about a dispensation of law, and we talk about a dispensation of grace, uh -huh. it's really always been salvation by faith. Come on. Amen. amen. It's all, Abraham was saved by faith, just like Brother David Fentress was saved by faith. Amen. Yes. And Paul begins to show us this in Hebrews 11 and 1 where he says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Amen. The elders, the saints of old, obtained a good report. Verse 3 says, through faith we understand that the world, that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The only way you're going to be able to understand the fact that in the beginning God is through faith. All right. 
It cannot be understood with your old carnal mind. Amen. You cannot take paper and a pen and figure out God. Amen? You cannot figure out God because He is beyond our thoughts. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Amen. His ways are higher than our ways. It's impossible for us to wrap our carnal, feeble mind. Now you might think you're real smart today. But there's no way the most intelligent human being that's ever lived yeah. could wrap their mind around God existing forever. All right. Because we have to see a beginning and we have to see an end. But there is no beginning and no ending in God. Amen? Amen. In the beginning, God was there. Yes. Amen? Amen? So it says that the only way we can understand that is through faith. He's talking about obtaining a good report through faith today. Yes. Verse 4, the very first example he gives of this. And God does things in order. He does things for a purpose. Amen? The very first thing that he gives us in verse 4, Hebrews 11. Mm -hmm. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent <laughs> sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Now let's look at this for a minute. We've talked about this before. We talked about the altar of Abel. We talked about the altar of Cain before. Amen. And unless I'm mistaken, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we know that in the Garden of Eden that God made coats of animal skins for Adam and Eve, so there had to be bloodshed. Right. For their sin. Right. Amen. There had to be death for their sin. Amen. So he clothes them in animal skins of animals that have been killed, sacrificed. Yeah. Then we find the very first sacrifice offered to God is with Cain and Abel. Right. Whenever they bring their offerings, they build an altar and they offer an offering to God. Now most scholars, and I believe as well, I believe that Cain and Abel were brought up and they were taught by their father to offer sacrifices to God. I believe that Cain knew what kind of offering God accepted. Come on. I believe that Abel knew what kind of offering God accepted. I don't believe that it was just by chance that Abel thought, well, I'll offer him one of my lambs. I'll offer a blood sacrifice. Yeah. Or that Cain just, you know, thought, well, I don't know really what to offer, so I'll offer this. But we find in these two offerings, we find Abel offers a blood sacrifice, and it is accepted by God. And Cain offers a sacrifice of his hands, his works, right. his own ability. He was a tiller of the ground. He grew things. Amen. And he brought those things. Not that those things were bad. Right. Not that those things were worthless. But those things could not atone for sin. Amen. Those were not the acceptable, that was not the acceptable sacrifice in the way that God had set things up. Right. And it wasn't so much Abel's sacrifice, the lamb that this blood was shed. Neither was it in the Old Testament tabernacle about the, the rams and the lambs and the bullocks and all of that that was offered in the Old Testament tabernacle. It wasn't about all of that. That blood could not take away sin. Right. That blood covered it. That blood atoned for the moment. Amen? True. That blood sufficed for the moment. The thing that caused them to be righteous was faith in that which that blood represented. Amen? Right. The elders obtained a good report how? Because they had faith looking forward to the cross that was coming. Amen? Right. They had faith looking forward to the promise where Jesus would be the Messiah, would be sin of God, to lay down His life for all of mankind and be the Savior of the world. Those on that side of the cross, before it took place on Calvary's hill, their faith saved them because their faith was in that which was to come. Amen? Amen. Whenever they shed the blood on the offerings, on the, on the altars, and they offered up the sacrifices, that was a picture and a type of the perfect sacrifice that was to come. And they obtained righteousness by having faith 
in that which was to come all through the Bible. Beginning in the book of Genesis, it points to one supreme sacrifice that would come. Even in the wording that God spoke to Eve and the serpent, it speaks of one sacrifice to come. And through all of the blood that was shed, the bullocks, the rams, all the lambs, all of the offerings of the Old Testament, it wasn't faith in that particular blood. That was a symbol. That was a type. That was a shadow. It was faith in that which would happen 2,000 years ago when Jesus would hang on the cross and give His blood. And they obtained a good report because of their faith in what was coming. Amen. Because of their faith in the promise that God had promised was coming. Come on, preach. And it says here about Abel, he offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Yeah. Anything you can offer to God today, mm -hmm. your works, your deeds, all of that fades in comparison to the more excellent sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross of Calvary. Your works cannot save you. Works have never been able to save. Amen. Justification does not come by works or deeds. Right. That doesn't mean that works are bad. Right. Some people will take that and they'll run with it and they'll say, well, I don't need to have any works then. Mm -hmm. Every one of us one day will stand before God and we, and we will give an account for our works, our deeds, and the way that we lived. Come on. In the sense that we will receive rewards for good deeds. Yeah. We will receive a reward, let me put it like this, for good works. Amen? Come on. But our salvation does not rest upon that. Mm -hmm. Today our salvation as the elders of old, their faith was in that which was to come. Yeah. That's where their righteousness and justification came from. Amen. Today our justification, our sanctification, our salvation today comes from looking back yes. to that which has already happened Amen. on the cross of Calvary, to putting our faith in the finished promise, Amen. the promise that He promised to Abraham. And Abraham looked forward to that promise. He put his faith in God's Word that that promise was coming. I believe it. I embrace it. Yes. Now we on this side of the cross, we look back at what Jesus accomplished. Yeah. The promise fulfilled when God became flesh and dwelt among us. Whenever God Himself laid down His life on an old rugged cross and we put our faith in that blood. Amen. Then and there is where our justification and our salvation lies this morning. Right. Cain's sacrifice was not acceptable then. Cain's sacrifice is not acceptable today. Amen. The only way to obtain a good report today is faith in what Jesus did. Yes. You can live your whole life doing good deeds, mm -hmm. doing good works. Yeah. Living a, a lot of good people didn't go to heaven. Amen. Amen. True. People with better works than me didn't go to heaven. Amen. Because it's not by works lest any man should boast. It's by the finished work on the cross of Calvary. And when we put our faith in that, True. that is the only means of justification today. Exactly. If you're waiting till you can live good enough, you're going to be let down. Absolutely. I told you this Tuesday night, there are days that we feel more righteous than others. Amen. Right. There are days whenever I go to bed and I might think, you know, I lived pretty good today. Yeah. I didn't get mad. I didn't, you know, I didn't blow up over nothing. <laughs> I can look back over my day and think, I, I feel pretty, and that makes you feel pretty good about yourself. Amen. Amen. And there are other days <laughs> whenever I look back and I'm like, oh, I really messed up today. Yeah. I really messed up today, but my point is this. I'm no less saved the day that I mess up than the day that I live right. Amen? The day that I do what I'm supposed to do. Because my faith is not in that. Amen. Now, was it okay whenever I did wrong? No. Was it all right whenever I blew up and blew off? Amen? No, it sure wasn't. Come on. But it doesn't mean I'm not saved. 
When you cease to be born again, or whenever you cease to be saved, when you cease to be justified, let me put it like that, is whenever you cease to put your faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work of the cross, and you begin to put your faith in those things that you can accomplish, when you begin to sacrifice at the altar of Cain, and you begin to say, oh, Lord, okay, Lord, I'm good enough by myself. These things are good enough to justify me. No, they're not. Amen. It doesn't matter what you do. You cannot stand justified before God unless you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Right. Abraham, the Bible says, oh, don't, don't, let me, don't let me skip this, verse 5. We'll get to Abraham in just a minute. But it's important that you hear this. It's important that you see this. Hebrews 11 and 5 says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his trans translation listen he had this testimony listen to what his testimony was that he pleased God now you might scratch your head and wonder well let's see how did he please God did he please God with his good works did he please God with his own righteousness did he please God with his religion did he please God with his denominationalism? Which they didn't have back then, but so we can understand it. The Bible tells us in the next verse how he pleased God. Verse 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to, to God must believe that he is, yeah. and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. We must approach him through faith. Right. Enoch pleased God how? Through faith. Because without faith, first it says Enoch pleased God. Yeah. Then it says it's impossible to please God unless you have faith. True. Faith in what? Faith in our works? No. no. Faith in our good deeds? No. no. Faith in what we can accomplish? No. The Bible is very plain, and I'll give you some scriptures as we close this morning. That we are not justified by works. We are not sanctified by works. We are not saved by works. Come on. And faith in any other thing for your salvation, then the blood of Jesus will not be accepted by God. All right. No matter how good you live, no matter how much work you do for God, no matter how holy you believe you are, no matter how right. sanctified you believe, your self-righteousness can make you the only thing, the only faith that is acceptable for salvation with God is the blood of the faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and what He did for us on Calvary. Amen. That's the faith that was accepted in the Old Testament. Exactly. Faith in the promise that was to come. Absolutely. Faith in what this blood represents. I know this is just a little lamb. Oh, hallelujah. Even in, even on the, on the, in the streets of Egypt that night that the death angel came through. I know this is just a little lamb born of this world. Wow, it's wow. not perfect. It was perfect in the sense that it didn't have disease. Wow, right. It didn't have a spot. It wasn't sick. It was as perfect as man could make it, but it wasn't good enough. But what what it represented was good enough. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. When the death angel came by, he didn't just see the blood of the little lamb that they had kept in their house and they had sacrificed <coughs> and that they had put the blood on the doorpost of the mantles. He saw a hill called Calvary. Hallelujah. He saw a hill called Calvary. Hallelujah. He saw a cross. And on that cross, a man. That is, oh, God, that he became man. Emmanuel, God with us. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Oh, praise to us. That's what he saw. Amen. That's what he saw. Exactly. Hallelujah. Faith in the finished work of the cross of Calvary. We find in verse 7 that by faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Listen to that this morning. His, for, he created an ark for the saving of his house. Not raining. Noah's building a boat. Right. Why? Because of God's God. word. God spoke to him and told him. Yeah. And he put faith in God's word. Never rained! Yeah, but God said it's gonna. Mm -hmm. Amen? 
Right. Never been a boat built like this before. Yeah, but God said to build it. Right. And it was for the saving of his house. It saved them mm -hmm. from the wrath that was being poured out. Amen. Now what did that ark represent? Jesus and his shed blood. Right. Because there's only me one means of being saved from the wrath which is to come. There's more wrath coming, folks. Right. Amen. True. Read over there in the book of Revelation. Amen. Where the cups, the bowls, the, the, the trumpets and all of that, the things of judgment are poured out. Mm -hmm. There's wrath coming. Amen. There is wrath coming. Yes, sir. And there's only one way to be saved from that wrath. And that is the blood of Jesus. And yeah. that's what Noah's Ark represented. Come on. Noah's Ark represented the finished work of the cross. Right. Noah's Ark represented salvation for him and his family. Mm -hmm. And there's only one means of salvation today. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. You, can argue, you can argue with me. Doesn't change the truth. You cannot believe it. You can shake your fist at God and say, I won't accept it. Doesn't change the truth. Amen. Still Jesus and Him crucified in no right. other way. Mm -hmm. True. Still Jesus and Him crucified. Look at verse 8. By faith Abraham. He's only going to make this more plainer. By faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should have after received an inherit for an inheritance obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. Had he seen it before? No. Had he heard of it before? No. Did he know where he was going? No. But he was moved by faith. Mm -hmm. Faith in what God was going to accomplish. Amen? Amen? It says, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Yeah. Drop down to verse 13. These all died in faith. You yeah. see, they were saved the same way that you are. Amen. You say, no, no, no. God's grace only began after the cross. Hmm. What's it say about Noah? Mm -hmm. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Earth. I got news for you. Abraham's salvation was not because Abraham was righteous in his own merit, upon his own merit and his own oh. deeds. Oh. It was the grace of God. It was the faith that he had in that which was to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. These all died in faith. Not having received the promises. Mm -hmm. Listen, not, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Don't, don't let me lose you. We're talking about their faith was in that which was to come. And here Paul does everything but draws a picture. He says these all died in faith, not having received the promise, but, have seen, but having seen them afar off. And were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. By faith, verse 17, go with me down to verse 17. Still talking about Abraham. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Amen. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. A symbolic example he sees here. Abraham saw this afar off. He sees that which God has promised from a distance, afar off. He sees it coming. Right. He puts his faith in that. And not, I'm not talking about with natural eyes. Mm. Through eyes of faith, Abraham puts his faith in that which God has promised. Mm -hmm. A Messiah is coming. Mm -hmm. A blessed seed. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child. Amen. They shall call his name Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Praise God. Faith in that which was to come. Can I prove it to you a little bit more? It says here, we just read, that they all died in faith. It said they had seen the promises afar off. You don't have to go there, but I'm going to go to John the 8th chapter, the 56th verse. These are the words of Jesus. John 8 and 56. And he's talking to some scholars there, some educated men. And he looks at them in John 8 and 56 and he says, Your father Abraham 
rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. You talk about confusing, confusing some smart folk. They stood there thinking, wait a minute. How did Abraham see your day? How did Abraham know of you? Come on. Because even though he had not received the promise, he died in faith. He hadn't received it, but he had seen it afar off. Right. Abraham, oh, you see how that fits together? Amen. Right. Paul over here in the book of Hebrews, they all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off. Then Jesus turns to these scholars and says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. Right. And was glad. And the Jews begin to scratch their heads and say, wait a minute, you're not even 50 years old. And you've seen Abraham? Mm -hmm. Jesus turns to him and says, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Mm -hmm. So Abraham, through the eye of faith, sees the promise of the finished work of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He sees it in the promise that his seed, that his seed that through his seed all the nations of the earth should be blessed. He saw it in the promise of a son, which was the beginning of the fulfillment of that promise. He saw it in the birth of his son Isaac. He saw it in a figure whenever the Lord spoke to him and told him to take Isaac, your only son Isaac, and take him up to the mountain and sacrifice him, offer him there to me. He sees this promise afar off. His faith is not in the fact that God will spare His Son. His faith is in the fact that God had already promised Him through this Son, the seed, through this seed, all of the earth is going to be blessed. Through this lineage, oh, hallelujah, through this lineage will my promise be fulfilled. So Abraham sees these things. And when he's spoken to God, spoken of God to take his son, his only son Isaac. Come on, hurry. Abraham is moved by faith. And he takes the wood for a burnt offering. And he lays it upon his son Isaac. And he takes the fire in his hand and a knife. And they both go together. The Bible says. And Isaac being curious, as I would be too. Isaac speaking to his father Abraham and said, My father? And he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And we know the rest of it. We know that he got Isaac up there and he prepared the altar and he laid him down. And he drew back the knife to strike him. But before he could, the Lord stayed his hand and said, oh, don't do it. I see now where your faith is at. I see now where your hope is at. And he hears a noise and he turns and there's a ram that's caught in the thicket. So Abraham sees the day of Christ, the great day of atonement on Calvary through the blessed seed that he's promised, through his son that is born. And now on this mountainside where God provided a sacrifice in the place of his son, where now his son didn't have to die, now there was a ram in his place. God had provided. In years down the road, God would provide. I love the King James Version. Amen. I love the way that it was translated. I love the way that it was worded. Amen. God will provide yes. Himself. Amen. A lamb. Right. Think about that for a minute. God will provide Himself right. a lamb. And that's exactly what God did right. on Calvary's cross. He provided Himself the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. And Abraham's salvation was wrought because of his faith in that which was to come. That which God had promised. Abraham's faith was in the promise even though it hadn't been fulfilled, but simply because God had promised it. And he put his faith in the fact that it was going to happen. Amen. Today our faith is in the promise. 
Yes, sir. But it's in that promise that was accomplished on Calvary's hill. Right. When Jesus Christ spoiled principalities yes. and defeated the devil's kingdom. Mm -hmm. When his blood ran down from his veins and down that old rugged cross. Right. And defeated sin, hell, and the devil. Romans 4 and 1 says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham was just, were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Do you hear that? Amen. Abraham's faith is what caused him to be righteous. Right, was the faith in Abraham? No, Abraham failed. Read the life of Abraham. Abraham was not a perfect man. Not as far as what we count perfection. Amen. He failed. Right. He failed. But his faith, the Bible says his faith did not waver. Yes. Amen. Right. He staggered not at the promise of God. Come on. He staggered not at the promise of God. I failed. Amen. Come on. But the promise is perfect. Yes. Hallelujah. The promise is perfect. Amen. And man is not. That's why we even had to have the blood. Right. That's why we had to have Jesus. Because man is not perfect. Yes. You are not perfect. If you believe that one day you will stand before God and be able to be justified by proclaiming your great works, your great deeds, the mighty things you've done, and showing God your self-righteousness, and you think that's going to justify you, you will be lost for eternity. Amen? Amen? The only justification we will find when we stand before God is that we have had our robes washed in the blood of the Lamb, that our faith was in Him. Hallelujah! And His Word! Hallelujah! His promise fulfilled on Calvary. Mom. The promise... Abraham looked forward in time and his faith was in that and he was justified because of it. Today on this side of the cross, we look back at the finished work of Jesus and we are justified today because of that work. We are justified today because of that. So we see clearly here in Scripture and in other Scripture that it has always been by faith. Faith in God's Word. Faith in what He promised to Abraham. It was faith in what He had promised to us today. It is faith in what He has accomplished mm -hmm. with that promise. Amen. The Bible says that we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Romans 1 and 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. faith. Romans 3 and 28 says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of of the law. Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The only way to have peace with God is through the blood of Jesus. The only way to be reconciled. That which Adam and Eve tore up miserably in the garden. There's only one reconciliation today. Not how good we live. Living good is we should. We should strive to live right. Amen. Many people, I, I think I said this earlier, I was going to, many people will run, will run with this and say, well then it's just, I'll just keep my faith in Jesus and then I'll live like the devil. <laughs> in the end, you'll find yourself weighed in the balance and found wanting as well because you will find that you think you can dabble in sin. Right. Sin will devour you. Amen. Sin will still take you farther than you want to go. Cost you more than you want to pay Amen. and keep you longer than you want to stay. We all sin. We all fail. We all mess up. True. Amen. But there's a difference in that and living in sin. Right. Whenever you begin to live in sin, you will find yourself lost as a ball in high weeds. Amen. So we don't live right today to save us. We live right because we're saved. Amen. To live right. Good works is a fruit of salvation. Amen. You see here, picture it as salvation being the tree. And that which is grown from that, the good works, the good fruit, all of that comes from where our faith is at, our salvation. Today man thinks, well, my tree can be my good works, my good deeds, my own righteousness. And then from that will spring salvation. No, 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 no. You got it backwards. You got it backwards. 
We are saved unto good works, meaning that good works will follow those who are born again. It is a fruit of salvation. Somebody's calling. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm closing. Romans 5 and 9 says, Much more then, being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through from wrath through Him. That's Romans 5 and 9. Because we are justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. I made mention of the wrath a while ago and how that Noah's ark saved his family from the wrath of God. This here says that we will be saved from wrath through Him, through Jesus, through His blood, through faith in His blood, through justification in His blood. Galatians 2 and 16. And I am closing. Galatians 2 and 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even when we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. There is no justification to be found in your works. We will all be rewarded according to our works. But the reward is not salvation. Salvation comes only through faith in Jesus Christ. Justification before God comes only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Sanctification before God comes only through the blood of Jesus Christ. No other means of salvation today. No other means of justification or sanctification. Brother Dave, you missed this scripture. I'm going to read it again for you, brother. Okay, Galatians 2 and 16. Okay. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith of, by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. There's only one means of justification today. And sanctification, and that is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's true. Hebrews 11 and 32. Hebrews 11 and 39. We'll skip on down there because I know I've been preaching for a while. Hebrews 11 and 39, because you can read the entire chapter, the, the, the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, and it talks about several people there. By faith, Jacob and Esau. By faith, Joseph. By faith, Moses. By faith, this you know, all the different people that it names off there. Uh, Rahab and, and the different people there. It sums it up in the 39th verse. It says, And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, meaning they had saw the promise afar off. All of these, you can find Jesus in every one of these. We preached a, whole, we preached a message on Rahab and her scarlet cord that she hung out the window there in Jericho. Yeah. And they said, when you see that scarlet cord, uh -huh. spare that house. Uh -huh. yeah. That's the only way you're going to be spared today. Right is when he sees that scarlet. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. That crimson flood. Mm -hmm. The Praise blood of the Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All of these died. All of these all. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now, Brother Billy, what is he saying? He's, saying, he's bringing us all together here. They without us. They, their vision of the promise, without, on this side, are seeing the fulfillment of the promise. Yeah. They were justified by faith in the promise to come. We are justified by faith in the promise that has been fulfilled. Right. And we are joined together, and that's how we are all justified. By faith. Regardless of whether you're in the Old Testament or on this side and you're the New Testament saints or if you're on this side of the cross, you are only justified by faith. And this scripture 
stresses the dependence upon Christ for salvation. The dependence upon Jesus and His blood. We are justified by faith. We are righteous by faith. We are saved by faith. And we must live by faith. Not faith in how good we can be, but how, how good He is. Amen. Not faith in what we can do, but faith in what He has already done. Faith in Him is the only way for justification. Amen. That's the only way for you to obtain a good report today is faith in Him. Yes. Faith in Him. Not by works, lest any man should boast. I won't be able to stand before God and say, I made it because I was such a good person. Amen. I did so many good things. You see, that wouldn't even be... Man would do that. Mm -hmm. right. Man would do that. If, if that was acceptable to God, we would get to heaven and there would be some of them uppity people up there just like they are down here. Right. I'm better than you. True. I've done better things than you. Mm -hmm. I've got more than you. Yeah. But God made the, le the, the ground level at the foot of the cross. Come on. You cut rich, poor, beggar, thief. You come by the blood or you don't get in. Amen. Amen. You will not stand on the streets of gold and look down your nose at anybody else. Amen. Everybody that's there got there one way. Faith in the blood. Faith in the finished work of the cross. Whether on the other side of it or on this side of it. Amen. Faith in what He has done. Only way we're going to get there. Come on, preach. Hallelujah. Somebody else this morning have something before we go. Hallelujah. Thankful this morning for the word.